Good morning. Good morning! T and Andy here, and today we are continuing on in our bike tour series. Andy, what are we doing today? Today, we're gonna show you how to carry stuff. Um, on a bike tour, you really don't have a lot of space, and the whole idea is to go camping on a bike. So today, we're gonna go through all of your options on how to carry stuff. We're calling this one Battle of the Bags. Let's go. Before we jump in though, if you want to see what we're doing all the way from the beginning of this bike tour series, check it out up here. Here. This side. This side. This side. It's somewhere up there. Also, if you like our content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a big thumbs up. It really, really helps us out. You can also hit the bell to get post notifications of any of our next videos. The way that we're tackling this video is by sections on the bike. So we're gonna take a look at the back of the bike, the middle of the bike, and the front of the bike. Each portion of the bike is going to have different bags associated with it, and we're gonna break it all the way down for you to give you all the tidbits of information. There is also something very interesting that uh, we put together. It's a price by liter. How much would it cost you for how much, uh, for how much volume of stuff you can carry? And if you check in the description below, there might be a surprise for you over there. Starting at the back of the bike, this is where you're going to carry a lot of your heavy stuff. You have two options, panniers and saddlebags. So let's start with the bigger volume. Tia, take it away. The first bag we're gonna talk about today are panniers. Not to be confused with panniers, which is food, and I totally thought Andy was talking about food the very first time he mentioned panniers. Or paninis, <laughs> also not bags. Now, pannier bags look something like this. Ooh. They're basically saddlebags that go on the back of your bike, and these are the easiest way to carry stuff on your bike tour or your bike packing trip, mainly because they're two bags that are quite large. Now, these particular ones that we have here are Schwinn brand, and uh, they hold 20 liters per bag. So you can see why it's a pretty popular choice because you can really put a lot of stuff in it. Now, the cost, the average cost of a pannier bag is about $60 per bag, uh, depending on you know the scale of quality that you want to go with. We got quite lucky with these Schwinn ones. We got them at Canadian Tire here in Canada and I think we paid about uh, 50 for both I 50 think. for both bags so it was quite a steal for us. Mm -hmm. So there is pros and cons that come along with the pannier bags. Now we'll start with the pro list. The pro list is obviously number one, you can fit a whole ton of stuff in here and you can rearrange it in so many different ways. You can literally play Tetris with your pannier bags. It's not too bad. Um, the other pro is that they do carry quite a lot of stuff. So if you do need to bring a good amount of items with you when you're bike packing, these are a really safe bet to go. And you can actually get them in um, waterproof versions or water resistant versions. So you can keep all of your stuff in there and keep it dry. And that's kind of uh, on your price range, the differentiator. If you want something that is waterproof, you pay for it. So Andy, what is the price per liter on these? It's $3.99 USD on average. I went on Amazon, did a whole bunch of uh, scouring, and that's kind of how uh, where it landed. $3.99 per liter. So it's really pretty good. You can get you know good good amount of stuff out of the liters of this bag. Now let's talk about a couple of the cons. So panniers don't fit on any bike just by itself. You do need a bike rack. So you will need one of these on your bike. Uh, bikes don't usually come with these. You need to buy them separately. And the panniers actually hook onto the bike rack itself. So that is an additional cost if you do go with the option of a pannier. The other con to these is that they really backload your bike, meaning they put a lot of weight at the back of the bike. And if you don't kind of counterbalance that, it can be a little bit difficult to ride. You really have to adjust as we learned. You have to adjust how you ride your bike because you're now carrying so much weight behind you. Turning becomes a little bit more sluggish. Climbing a hill is, well, give it a try and tell us how it is. But otherwise, so far we're pretty happy with these bags and for us, one of us will be riding with 
the panniers and that will be me. Now, Andy, why don't you take it away with what you're going to be using on the back of your bike? Here comes option number two. Option number two is a tail bag or seat bag or there's a bunch of different names for it. But the thing is, is you mount these guys to your seat post. There, uh, we do have two versions here. This one and this one. Uh, one of them didn't really make the cut because it's too small. This would be great for uh, a day out and then you just need to carry your keys, maybe a granola bar, something like that. But can't really fit too much into this. So what I will be carrying is this. This is a seat bag or tail bag. It has a way to, for you to attach it to your seat post. And this is my preferred way of carrying because, well, it straps uh, everything really close to the center. So it makes maneuvering your bike very easy. It definitely distributes the weight a lot better. And that is the number one pro. The number two pro is that these bags are usually waterproof. Check it out. Um, they're made of double-sided nylon and as long as you roll them correctly, they are waterproof. <laughs> um, the, uh, the downside to these bags though is that it is smaller. So this particular bag, and it's already one of the bigger ones, holds 14 liters. It's less than one of the panniers and it also has a limit on the bulk so in order for things to fit into this bag it has to be around three to four inches in diameter mostly and you can maybe have one thing that's a tiny a bit, bit bigger, bigger. This brings us to the middle portion of the bike. Here you have a few more options to work with and we're gonna cover three of them. So the three options that we're gonna talk about today are two different types of frame bags and one top bag. So let's start with the frame bags. Both Andy and I are, again, using two different frame bags on our bike. I've got this option right here. And, and I have this one. So let's take a closer look at what the difference is and why we chose each of them. So my personal frame bag is a fuller frame bag. Now it's not a full frame bag. Um, frame bags go in that middle portion, like that middle triangle of your bike. And you can actually buy ones that fit the full triangle. You can buy ones like this that fit um, half to, to three quarters of the triangle. And then you can buy ones like Andy's that just kind of hang there and fit a little less of the triangle. Hilarious, this is actually called a half frame bag. <laughs> it's a tad bit small for half. Yeah. So let's start with the specs of this bag. This one in particular is 3.25 liters. It's around $37 on average for a frame bag like this and the average cost per liter is $11.40. So quite a bit pricier than the back bags that we had been talking about. Now, frame bags are typically used to put smaller items into. You can put things like uh, your extra tubes, your pump, uh, snacks, water, anything really that you wanna have quicker access to. And he's got a couple of examples in his frame bag of what he's carrying here. And tire levers. <laughs> so he's carrying a lot of gear for us, things to fix the bike and maintain the bike while we're bike touring. For me, the reason I chose this frame bag is because I'm actually bringing a water bladder with us, a four liter water bladder, so I don't have to carry so many individual water bottles. And it fits perfectly in my half triangle. Next, it's time we talk about the half frame bag. This fits around a third of my bike's triangle. Um, 
I chose this one because I prefer water bottles and I am bringing two water bottles which fits underneath like that. Um, within my frame bag, I keep stuff that I want quick and easy access to. Um, it's a really, really, really great place to keep very heavy items. Bo both of these. I keep all of this stuff that I showed you. Tubes, uh, tools for fixing the bike, uh, my protective gear like the sleeves, a uh, little cap, and I also keep my granola bars in here. Um, one of the big reasons why I like this one is I have a main compartment on this side and a little zipper compartment on the other side. So it gives me a little bit of organization options. Plus, I think yours is a little more waterproof than mine. Well, we'll see. We'll test it out and let you know. <laughs> Even though this looks smaller, it's actually only smaller by 250 mils. So 0.25 liters, not that much smaller. The average cost of this is about 40 bucks though. So a little bit more expensive. <laughs> yeah. So you're paying about $13.50 per liter on average. Let's talk pros and cons about the frame bags. So some of the pros you have are, first of all, the frame bags allow you to have quick access to the items you need to have quick access to. The bags are not too big that you lose items in it, kind of like you may with the Paynear or the back bag, um, but they're not too small that you can't carry anything in them. The third pro is that they're also a really great size for you to put items in to distribute the weight on your bike. So like we said when we talked about the back bags, it's putting a lot of weight at the back of your bike, so you'll want to have some weight in the middle in the front to kind of even that out. Yeah, this is actually the perfect place to put small heavy items like tubes or tools. Because it is in the middle of the bike, you feel it less. Of course, there are cons with these bags. First of all, they allow you to put things in it, but only things that are about this wide. Any wider than your legs will rub on them as you pedal. Another thing, and this is especially true with the half frame bag, is that water bottles are hard to get out. They do get in the way. So you kind of, if you have a smaller bike with a smaller triangle, you kind of need to think and maybe just get this full one so you can put a water bladder in like Tia does. Testing is key. <laughs> Testing is key, yes. Uh, last but not least, the cost. The cost of these bags is much higher than if you were to just get a pannier bag. So that's a little bit of a downside. We have one more option for the middle-ish of the bike and it is... The top bag! This is a top two bag. Some people call it a feed bag. There's a or a gas tank. It's uh, there's a whole bunch of different names for this. But this bag is really great for your small critical items. Tia, demonstrate. Want quick access to your cell phone? Put it in the top bag. Do you want quick access to a pump because you keep blowing out your tires? Put it in a top bag. This is also a great place for food. Snacks! Hence, gas tank, you know. <laughs> it looks like a gas tank and it, it feeds, feeds you. you. <laughs> um, we plan on putting granola bars in here, uh, candy bears, um, just a bunch of stuff that you can ride while you eat. Because bikepacking is an endurance thing. It's cardio. You will get hungry. Trust me, do you ever get hungry? So keep a bunch of snacks in here is a great option for it. For us, we're also going to be using this on our bikes for our vlogging gear. We need quick access to the camera that we're currently filming with and our tripod. So those are items that we will also be putting in this bag because there is quick access. Okay, here are some specs. This is a one and a half liter top tube bag. It is $34.99, so whew, a it's little, a little bit pricey. Up there. Yeah. What that works out to is about $22.60 per liter. Ouch. Have you noticed that as, <laughs> as they get smaller? The price goes up. Uh, <laughs> I will say though, Andy, you've been using this on a couple of our rides and how, how worth it is it? It's very convenient and I think that is what you're paying for. Um, 
we were riding along, I just pull something out of this. Tia's like, hey, I want something to eat. Pull the granola bar out, put our phones in here. Uh, another great place for this is our full-size battery bank. It also fits in here very nicely. You do pay for convenience and I can tell you this for sure, this is waterproof. I got caught in the rain the other day, everything here was dry and this particular one, the zipper tucks right in, meaning this whole entire seam is dry. Quick recap on the pros and cons of the top bag. The pros, it is waterproof and it's convenient, aka you have quick access. The cons are, it's expensive. I think she's hinting at something. <laughs> we are getting to the front of the bike. This is where you're going to load pretty much on or in front of your handlebars and you don't have that many options. Like Tia was showing you, you have the option, which is a bar bag. This is called a bar bag, handlebar bag. Uh, the theme of it is it hangs on your handlebar. And the other option is a basket. Well, the basket. Now, I think if you talk to most uh, bike packers or people who do bike tours frequently, they will probably not be using a basket. I think the option of using a basket is a very me thing to do because I really wanted a basket on my bike. Now, the basket is actually turning out to be very, very convenient. I'm a little jealous, to be honest. It's actually quite, it's really great because it's right there in front of your handlebars. You've got quick access to items and the basket can actually hold quite a few items in it. Mm -hmm. I, we, I don't really have a, a statistic on baskets, but it generally costs about 40 to 50 bucks, somewhere around there. The carrying capacity is really as whatever you want to stuff into it. <laughs> there is a weight limit though, so you do have to make sure that you're staying within that weight limit. But yeah, they're a little more, the range is a little different than working with specific bags. Um, we plan on putting lighter items in it. We might put uh, our food in there. And again, other items that I need quick access to will probably go in that front basket. Option number two, like Tia was making it swim, are handlebar bags. So we have a couple of options here. We have this one that Tia was showing. Uh, the big difference between this one and this one is that this one, the bag, the, she's not, the bag comes off. So this is called like a sausage roll. I have heard that term being thrown around, but it's basically a piece of Velcro that you stick it onto. It's funny how so many of the bags remind me of food. <laughs> Paneers, sausage rolls, paninis. The, this, this one here is kind of the same thing. However, this is integrated so you don't take it apart. It opens up from both sides and you kind of stuff all your stuff into it. So Tia, Tell us the specs. All right, this particular bag and one similar to this are about 10 liters in what they carry. They're around $70. Yes, the price is higher than what we've talked about previously, which brings it to about $7 per liter. Really not too bad. The price per liter is a lot cheaper than the middle bags. Mm-hmm. Probably because it's less convenient and it really is. This is not something that you can just reach into to grab stuff while you're riding. These bags also depend on what handlebars you have. Andy's got those like bullhorn handlebars, you know, like, like this. They're called drop bars. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the drop bars. So this bag fits really nicely in between them. I have a very box store bike setup and this kind of bag would not work on my handlebars. We actually bought our bikes from the same place. So if you want to check out how to convert your big box store bike into my bike, check some up here somewhere. <laughs> we'll give you all the tips and tricks to selecting a bike that you can modify and take you through around approximately the cost of upgrading it. Let's talk pros and cons. If we're looking specifically at the basket, your pros are, well, it's a basket. You can put whatever you want into it. And it is really handy right there at the front of your bike, quick access. Mm -hmm. Now the cons are, 
it's a basket. So <laughs> there's no waterproofing about it and it does have a weight limit. So although you might have physical capacity to put things, you have to be aware of how much weight you're putting in it. Okay, pros and cons of these bar bags, sausage bags. One, the way you mount it, it kind of gets in your way sometimes. Two, there's no real way of reaching into it. And three, even though it rolls out to be pretty long, this thing needs uh, to be rolled up pretty tightly in order to fit in between your handlebars. So it's one of those your mileage may vary things and you really got to see whether or not your setup will work for it. Now on to the pros. This is actually a really great place for you to put some of your elongated gear. Um, like a tent for example if your tent is really long you can put it right into it if you have a really uh what do they call a the one with like straight handlebar things mm -hmm. you can put your tent pole on it and then you'll carry really nicely um the, you can access this particular one from both sides and it is waterproof lastly it, so, uh, most of them that one no but most of them comes with this uh, little um, tie down thingy where you can tuck like a jacket or something so that's also very very convenient and one last thing and probably the most important thing this does have a 10 liter carrying capacity so it allows you to distribute the weight from the back to the front making your bike easier to handle and this is actually the reason why I decided to go with this system well that's all our bag options so check the link below we did break them out by cost per liter so that and we're back guess what happened guess who forgot to charge their batteries <laughs> all right let's try this wrap up again take it away andy <gasps> okay so which one which one should you choose that that's kind of the question right okay if you are looking for the most economic way of getting into bikepacking, hands down is Painiers. The rack and the Painiers will set you back around $200 uh, and you can carry 40 liters of uh, stuff. And if you really want, you can get another rack for the front and another set of Painiers and that will set you back a little less because the front rack is a little cheaper. Plus, you might find a good deal on the Painiers like we did. That's right. So that's the most economic way. Again, the drawback is that you are fighting with the balancing and all that. To address that, there's the frame bags. Now, this is the more expensive way to go, but it does allow you to distribute your weight a little bit, a lot better. It's a lot better. better. Yep. But the biggest tip we probably have when it comes to the bags is test them out. Order a bunch. We ordered from Amazon, especially because we have Prime, so we can try things out and return them if they don't work. And testing things out and different combinations is what worked best for us. The combinations are how Andy and I ended up having completely different bike setups. And we found what really worked best for each of us. So if there's one thing that you take away from this video, it's test it out and find what works best for you. Just make sure that you have somewhere to put your really bulky stuff, like your tent and sleeping bag, somewhere, some way to distribute the weight to the front, either with a bar bag or the basket. <laughs> and also have something to carry these convenience items for, the food, the battery bank, and the phone and stuff like that. That's the rule of thumb and everything else is up to you. One final item here. You may have noticed that a lot of our bags are from the same company. This Rock Bros company is actually one that we found from Amazon and we absolutely love the, uh, the quality of their bags. Uh, the great part about it too is they're a decent price. So because we're not pro bike packers, we don't need all the pro gear. We wanted something that would be good as a beginner. We highly, highly recommend Rock Bros. If you are interested in any of their products, we do have affiliate links in our comments below. Check them out. Well guys, that wraps up our review of the Battle of the Bags. We hope you found this video really helpful. If you do have any questions- I'm just semi-helpful. <laughs> if you do have any questions, you know where to put them in the comments below and we'll make sure to get back to you. And if you have any information to share on your setup, let us know. We'd love to hear it. Otherwise, Tia and Andy, out.